Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Faith on Film. Holly, how are you? Doing great, Isaac. I'm doing great today. And it's interesting because we're in the kind of middle of the summer, you know, hits and things that have come in and out of theaters. We're seeing the trends. We're seeing what's going on. But one trend we're seeing, which we're going to feature today, are two trends. One is something that we can recommend for your children and for the little ones, that it's good programming. And one that's not so good for the young children and even older ones. One that we can't really recommend. (laughs) We're going to talk about um, More to Explore, which is a show that was created by people we've actually had on the show before, Isaac. We had on Isaac Alonghi and Sandra Martin, and they did the uh, Christmas movie last year. We had them on. And guess what? They've created a children's program that we, you and I both watched it. We can endorse it. We love what it is. And then we're going to talk about the movie Barbie which we are can't really endorse for little kids and we'll tell you why. So a lot of a lot of good things to discuss in the show today. Yeah, well we just want to make sure you folks know that we talk about Barbie not because we think that you should go watch it, but we're also not going to tell you not to. We're going to tell you what's in it so that you can decide what you should do, but we really kind of think you shouldn't see it, right? <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> Put it this way: you have to be of a certain age to see it, I think, and it's okay. being pro, you know promoted to young children, and it's not. So we'll get into okay. more of that later. All righty. Well, first off, let's go uh, check out the trailer to More to Explore, and then we'll come back to talk with Isaac and Sandra. Jump up, get ready. It's time to go. Today's a perfect day to search and learn and grow. There's truth to uncover. So climb on board, come on, let's hit the open road. Whoa, oh, there's more to explore. Whoa, oh, more to explore. Oh, what a wonderful looking production. Welcome to Faith on Film, Isaac and Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's exciting to have you back, actually, because yes. we've had you on before, That's bringing right. back Christmas. I mean, then now, we're, like you, we've been talking about, half a half a year later, we're almost up to Christmas again, so we can <laughs> promote it once again. <laughs> but you guys, boy, the the dust never settles under you. You usually are filmmakers, but you got a lot going on now, don't you? Well, you know, Sandra's always wanted to do a kid show, but we've been making a lot of movies, and um didn't really have time to fit anything else in. And um, we did a, we did a, like you said, a Christmas movie last year called It's Christmas Again. And uh, now we have a little downtime between films. So this, this new kid show is really exciting. It's something short. It's for, you know, young children. And um, we can kind of squeeze it between all the other, all the other pr- projects. <laughs> so what is the reason that you decided to do a kid show this time? Well, my focus has really been like kind of, I feel like I've been going younger and younger, but I've got two grandkids um, now, three and five. And so we've really seen the importance of um, just what they're watching. Um, You just have to be so careful because there's just so many voices out there right now and so much content for them, their little eyes to view. Um, But it seems like there's just really a need for wholesome you know, uh, positive stuff, just putting good things into their minds. You know, I I have a, uh, my youngest son has a five and a three-year-old and I was just visiting them in Idaho and I was showing them, you know, your, the clip you sent Isaac to me, I showed him that. I said, here's a program that they can actually watch because they're watching Bluey and a couple other things. Yeah. She is very particular she said, yeah. even when you have things on YouTube, they stick stuff in between. And she said, I have to constantly screen ahead to make sure that they're even if that's a good show, they're not putting something else in between or a commercial or hitting right. with it. Are you guys concerned about that? Because where can people see this, first of all, on YouTube, well, right? It's on YouTube. And I have heard parents say that very thing um, because it's not anything we can control. It is up to what YouTube does. But we chose YouTube to start because it's a free platform. So, you know, anybody can watch it. You know, I would really say, parents, watch with your kids. Um, I think it's a nice experience. And then you you know what they're watching, and you can talk about it later. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the show? Uh, You know, we're 
We've been talking here a couple of minutes, but what is the yeah. show all about? The show is really, um, we, we follow, we have a host, her name is Mia, and a little animated bird, his name is Ralphie. And we follow them on each show into a, an adventure. So we go out, we start in the set, and then we go out into the world, take a little field trip, basically, and we see something new each time. And then every episode, we get a group of kids together and we do an activity. And so it's kind of like, you know, there's such a discussion about screen time, and I definitely get that. So let your kids watch this, but then it encourages them to go out into the world, explore. That's right. And it gives you an activity you can do together. And then at the end, we tie each episode up with a little lesson um, about how God loves us or how God made to, us. He loves us. He cares about us. Yeah. And how yeah. to treat other people. Just some really basic messaging, but really good and important. Yep. Have you gotten a response so far? I mean, you just launched this, correct? Two weeks ago. Yep. Two this is just our, yeah. our second week. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're getting good response. And parents seem to really like it because I think it is hard to find good quality kid stuff. Well, there's no annoying songs in it either. We, try so <laughs> <laughs> we are choosing all the music with parents in mind. <laughs> Thank you. Because there, there are other shows out there, even as a grandparent, when I visited, yes. do we have to hear the Blippi song one more time? I mean, there's things. Yes. That just and, the, and the voice, right? And the voice. It's, it, it matters. It doesn't to kids, but it sure does to parents and grandparents. <laughs> I'm telling you, literally, because they're addicted. And they were like, can we do Blippi again? And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. But so good. This is good. Now, why did you choose? First of all, let's talk about Mia, your talent. How did you cast her or find her? And why was she perfect for the role? Oh, man. She is great. She was in our Christmas movie, the It's Christmas Again. And so we got to work with her on that. And we just, we love her, her talent. We love her personality. Um, we love yeah. that she loves Jesus. Um, she has a wonderful attitude. Um, she's great with children. I can't hardly imagine finding someone more great to host this show. She's like sincere when she engages with the kids and stuff. It's really easy to see um, yeah. how she relates to them. Yeah. Now, would you would you say for... Okay, we know a little bit of God is in there. Is this something that non-believers, I mean, that believers can have a non-believer family or a family member watch? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. I mean, the only thing I would say is everything that we're going to do is comes from a biblical worldview. doesn't mean that we're talking about it all the time, but it does mean we believe that God is the creator. And, you know, so they're going to hear that, but, yep. <laughs> but it's well, just yeah. educational, too. Well, I, okay. I, I have a I have a little granddaughter that's three years old. <clears throat> Definitely, I'm going to show this to her. But uh, you were talking about songs. There's a song that every time she gets in the car with us, she has to yeah. on, which is driving me nuts. And that is this little <laughs> daddy finger, mommy finger. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm so tired of hearing that. So I'm looking forward to <laughs> share her liking some of some of these songs. <laughs> now, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Now, so uh, what do you think the show then is going to accomplish? Or what do you hope it accomplishes? We, I mean, our, our dream with this show, it's not to get it on Netflix. It's not to, you know, do anything like that. It's not a monetary dream or goal. Our goal with this show is to just get truth in front of as many young children as we can. I mean, kids are so impressionable when they're little. Um, and it's a, it's a, good time to teach them values they'll carry with them for the rest of their life. Are you concerned at all? And I may be like preempting, but in today's age, mm -hmm. are you going to get hit with the, um, you know, accepting the, you know, trans community or accepting the other stuff or crossing information with the kids? Are you, are you able to keep the stories you feel from being attacked and it's just in its own form. I know that's hard to predict or say, but we well, live in such a critical yeah. time. It's just hard to even come out with something fresh and sweet and, and innocent. Yeah, we've already been told that because um, one of our scripts said how God chose us and so uh, we're special <laughs> and we're loved, that that was not inclusive. So um, <laughs> when we were trying to film somewhere. So, but you know what, that's okay. That's 
<laughs> hey, maybe it's not for everyone. <laughs> everyone. It's, just, it's just for most people. But the thing is, is our message is that God is the most inclusive. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. exclude anyone. Yes. And there's no membership. There's no club. There's nothing that you have to do. You're just accepted. Our values are love, patience, self-control. Which one of these don't you agree with? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, I'm I'm rooting for you guys. I love that there is this new thing out there, that there's something new for our kids, grandkids to watch and kids. And uh, how can people watch it? Like, where can they go to find out about it and watch the series? And how many do you have? Is it like seven, eight? Is it well, ongoing? Okay, so we have five up right now, and we have a new one comes out every Saturday. Ooh, wow. And uh, you can go to YouTube, and it's on... Um, more to explore with Mia and Ralphie, or you can go to more to explore show.com and it'll take you there. That's right. Well, that's exciting. Gosh, you guys, are you going to like have a limited 12 or 13 or whatever, and then have a break and then do it? Or is this ongoing? Do you even know yet? The goal is to probably do it <laughs> ongoing. Um, I mean, obviously we're just, we're self-funding it. We're doing it. Um, you know, just the two of us. And, uh, so I think we can do it for a while. Yeah, my my thought was it would be something we could do like kind of in between other work, but we have found it has kind of become a full-time job. <laughs> it's a lot more work than you would think. <laughs> because it's mostly just us doing it. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of filmmakers will really relate to what you're saying right now, that it's a lot of work and you take it on thinking, oh, I can do this, and then it becomes overwhelming. Any projects that you have coming up that we can look forward to seeing or hearing more about in the future? Right now, I think we're just focused on doing this for a while. Yeah. So. All right. Well, you guys, thank you. It's been great to have you on and to share this story. Yes. And we will definitely promote it. And uh, I'm going to send it to my grandkids, I know. And, right. uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure, Isaac, you'll get a new song out of it, right? I That's certainly right. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> With a granddaughter. Uh, any, other, any other messages you guys wanted to say before we depart? How can people I would get just say... Um, Go to YouTube and subscribe. That would really help. Okay. And and if people want to email you or if there's any comments that they want to make, like shows they would like to see or a topic they'd like to see, yeah, can they do great. that? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah it's more to explore show.com and they can reach okay. us through the website. Okay. Well, and we'll have people praying for you too because you need that as well. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you so much, Sandra Thank and Isaac. We appreciate Thank having you guys, guys on. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Folks, we'll be right back with more Faith on Film. This is what you'll need. Six to eight inches of string, a pine cone, peanut butter, and bird seed. And you're just gonna spread that on there. And the goal of the peanut butter is so that way the bird seed will stick. And then you're gonna take your bird seed and you're just gonna drizzle that on there and it should stick. Just like that. Good job. Look at you, you're going in. <laughs> You've got it all coated. Good job, guys. Do you wanna go ahead and try and stick bird seed on yours? You probably have enough. And then just take the bird seed. And put it over there. Look at that, there we go. This is an easy way to make a treat for the birds in your yard. And you can watch them as they snack. You know, it's so wonderful to see people that are just creating some great, great content for our, for our kids and grandkids. In my case, grandkids, isn't it? My, my case, grandkids too, and with their own money and their own time. Yeah. I mean, they aren't getting this funded. This is their own money and their own time they're putting into it. So it is a labor of love, definitely. Absolutely. And um, how much more do you have to respect that? Yeah, absolutely. We should keep them in our prayers for sure. 
Absolutely. You know, Isaac, there's with having the good programming that we were just talking about Mm -hmm. and now kind of switching over to not necessarily bad programming, but folks, Barbie is a movie that it's being touted for little kids and it's not a little kids movie. If you're older, you know, preteens to teens, you want to take them. Okay, but we're going to set up some things that you need to be aware of before you do. Okay, and in fact, Isaac, let's show a trailer so we can understand more of that. All right, here we go. Hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now till forever. Yeah. You guys ever think about dying? When my heart breaks Some things have been happening that might be related When my world shakes Cold shower Ooh. Falling off my roof ah! And my heels are on the ground <gasps> What do I have to do? You have to go to the real world You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. Closer I am to Closer I am to I'm coming with you. Okay. This is the real world. <laughs> What's going on? Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. <laughs> Barbie in the real world. That's impossible. If this got out, this could mean extremely weird things for our world. This would be catastrophic! We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Oh. No one rests until this doll is back in a box. Even if nobody else sings along. Humans only have one ending. Get that Barbie! Ideas live forever. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. A sharp thing? No. There he is. Doctor! Somebody get security. It's Bobby, but if you're still in doubt. That was the fun- the funniest part work was Kim's lines. I thought he was hilarious. Ryan Gosling nailed it. It was funny. He was really funny. <laughs> you know though, what I find very dangerous about this? is about just what's happening in the entertainment world is that they're taking stories or or they're taking content from you know that was intended for kids they're making it look like it's for kids but the stories themselves are very mature oriented and not only that but they're actually of almost a very anti-biblical world view that that's dangerous you think almost isaac (laughs) (laughs) okay first of all it's approaching tell me about it it's seven out of seventy million. It's approaching seven seventy-five million. I think it's approaching a billion. It will be by the time, probably this week, coming week, or the next couple weeks are over. So it's definitely making money nationally and internationally. Now, funny enough, in China, it's not tracking so well. Japan, they're not even hardly watching it. So it's trying to pick up speed in China and trying to grow their numbers there. I mean, what do you think? Probably lack of people being able to go see it or whatever. But of course, all over the rest of the world, it's taking off now. Again, in the trailer, you guys, remember the part where they go to the real world at Venice Beach and she says, why are all the guys looking at me? And Ken says, oh, they're looking at me, too. I mean, there's subtle little lines in this movie and subtle little things. And then there's not so subtle. They approach some construction workers. And after a couple of minutes of conversation, she says, I don't have a and she says the V word for her private parts. And he doesn't have a P. And she says the word. I was shocked when I heard those two words. I mean, as if it's not a big deal in a quote unquote kids movie. Yeah, it's rated PG-13, but I was sitting amidst an audience of five and six and seven and eight year olds. I mean, tons of them filled the theater. So that was 
offensive right off the bat. There's a trans Barbie, there's a gay Kins. The very last line of the movie where you think she's going in to apply for a job and she says, who are you here to see? And she says, my gynecologist. That's the last line of the movie, folks. So, I mean, is this really something you want to walk out and have to explain what your to your five year old what a gynecologist is wow. or talk why she was saying that or discuss those lines about the private parts, which a lot of parents are teaching their children, you know, certain names and terms. So these are the kind of things that I'm saying. It's not for mm-hmm. little children. You'd think it would be. There's a speech in the minute in the middle of it where American Ferrara is the. Um, the one who owned the Barbie. She goes to find out who owns her because she's thinking these negative thoughts So she goes to the real world. She is the girl that owned a Barbie when she was younger. She's having negative thoughts. And so Barbie connects with her. And she gives a speech in there about women. And, you know, for years we've, you know, da-da-da-da-da, we've mopped, we cooked, we've sung, we've taken care of babies. I mean, it's a full minute, two minute, you know, speech that she gives. When she finished, women and teen and young girls in the audience were clapping because, you know, mom started it. And they're clapping in the audience. So, yes, it is kind of that I am woman, hear me roar thing. But it, again, talks about patriarchy. And it really attacks and goes against patriarchy and and minimalizes men and male roles. It minimalized it all the way through. So, I don't know. Did you go see it, Isaac? (laughs) You can Uh, can talk about that. Yeah, no. And I got to tell you, I'm so grateful to you that you go and see these things <laughs> so that you can tell us what's in there. And uh, and I know they won't affect you because, you know, you're a mature Christian. Yeah. But, you know, my, my concern would be people that are not mature Christians, which mm-hmm. apparently there's a lot of them. In fact, I have a friend who uh, who went to see it. She's a Christian. And she, yes. she let us know how wonderful it was. <laughs> So I thought, oh, I can't wait to to see what Holly has to say, because I got to find out why she thought it was wonderful and why you didn't. Uh, I look at it it as like a a, a snow cone, you know, that children would like, but inside there's poison. I mean, is is that kind of a, a proper analogy to make here? Well, snow cones aren't as like poison. <laughs> I, I don't want to use that. Well, I mean, but I mean the, the snow cone yeah. kids love, you know, I want a snow yes. cone, you know, but inside, yes. inside, yeah. inside, what if they put poison in it? And that's what this, well, the is. Packaging, oh, I want to see this movie, the packaging, the packaging exactly. and the commercialism and the clothing right now and the shoes <laughs> and the things you can buy and the Barbie world clothing when you walk into stores. And yeah, I mean, we are being inundated with marketing. They spent a lot of money and I don't know how much because it hasn't been revealed, but they spent a lot of money marketing it. The thing I would ask your friend or ask you is, how old was your friend? Is she a grown woman? Because she yes. may have appreciated that speech about women. She may have appreciated the thing about, you know, getting women That's, to reach a point where they're not marginalized. So, yeah, women might go, this is great. But a seven-year-old, I mean, no, and my, that's my point about this review. Right, Folks, pay attention to the rating. Moms, go see it first with your girlfriends and then decide if that's something you want your five, six, or seven-year-old to go see. Because I'm just saying it is not appropriate, I don't feel, for younger boys or mm-hmm. girls. And, you know, people that have um, children that are gay or gay relatives or whatever, I get it, I understand. Mm-hmm. This is not so much, um, it's it's in there, but it's very subtle. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the other subvert, mis- the, the sexualizing right. of children, the sexualizing yes. of children. You know, we just talked about Sound of Freedom and how mm-hmm. it's, yes, it's talking about, you know, with one form of taking children and sexualizing them. But, you know, it's happening in other ways, too. Tim Ballard says it's not just kidnapping kids. It's our marketing, it's our movies, it's Hollywood, it's other things. And this is part of sexualizing younger children, which the schools are doing and everything else. And it doesn't need to be done now. But that's what this film does. So now you went to see it. How many kids did you see in that theater when you when you went to see it? Roughly. The theater was full. There was maybe only six or seven empty seats out of a huge and it was a huge theater. It was not a small one. And like I said, rows and rows of uh, kids to teens, one mom, uh, well, two, three moms, they had a whole row. And the girls were probably 11, 12, 13 ish, mm-hmm. you know, in there. And they're the ones that were cheering, you know, when the line came up about women and hear me roar and what women do. Right. Um, but on either side and behind, there was little ones and all the way in the theater. So a lot. Of, in fact, I walked out and there's a little girl with a sparkly pink skirt and her shirt and and her jewelry. And I said, did you just go see Barbie? And her mom said, yeah, I just took her 
And she said, yeah, I just went. I said, do you like it? You know, I didn't want to go. Why did you take your daughter to that? But anyway. Well, what, what I found rather funny, too, was that I, I've seen, you know, I follow Facebook a lot. And I see a lot of people posting pictures. And I see a lot of adults dressed up in Barbie stuff. Oh, serious. <laughs> you know what they did? They tapped in. Okay, it'd be like a guy. It'd be like a guy with a Marvel movie, and he used to collect the Marvel right. figures, and now he's grown, and he's going to the movie, and he wants to see it. It's like, for girls, that was, you know, I grew up with them, I, you know, and my daughter, and, you know, her friends, my granddaughters, I mean, they've grown up with them. So this is really tapping into the culture that women want to be girls again kind of thing, and I agree with you. They've really... It worked. The marketing worked. No, no. I saw guys dressed up as Ken's. Oh, my gosh. As Ken? Oh, Isaac. I, I just, yeah, I'm like, oh, my goodness. There, there is no I love the story that Ryan. I love the story that Ryan Gosling tells. He mm -hmm. said when he got the phone call, you know, from Greta um, uh, to be in it, you know, the director, let's see, Greta, what's her last name? Uh, Gerwig, Gerwig, Greta Gerwig. And he got the call from her to be in the movie. She's a director. And he goes, okay, you know, and he took the phone. She says, I want you to be Ken. He got off the phone, went back out into his yard and looked where his little girls were playing and their playthings. And there was a Ken doll smushed face down, like with a bathing suit on. And there was a squashed lemon next to him and a bunch of broken toys. And he took a picture of it and he sat back and he said to her, I want to redeem Ken. <laughs> you know, because he's been, so, Ken is the extra, uh, you know. Uh, he uh, goes, I never had a role, I never had a part, what do I want to wow. do? But wow. you just show him kind of aimlessly going through. And at the very end, Barbie's liberated. He's not really. Wow. Well, Listen, we only we only have like a minute and a half left, and you wanted to talk about. I can't believe we spent all this time talking about Barbie. Uh, but I don't know. Do you want? Is there another one that you want to just let us know about, or should we just celebrate the fact that uh, Sound of Freedom is just doing fantastic? Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate, Let's celebrate what it's doing because it's yes. now been a month, a mm -hmm. month, folks, from July. It's been a month, and yeah. you know, by the time you see this, it may be more. But it's already had one hundred and thirty million dollars, okay. and you know, climbing. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's I, I, the latest report I just saw today was 148 or 47. There it million. is. <laughs> there it is. I was looking at stats from a week. You know, it's every weekend it's going up and yeah. I'm happy. I'm glad about that. Me and too. now people are becoming aware. Now people are talking about, you know, the proselytizing of children. And that's what I'm saying. Connecting Barbie. I'm not trying to say it's the same thing as Sound of Freedom, but folks, it's subtly, it's all over the place for our yeah. children. So yay, Sound of Freedom. Yay, directors. Yay, all the people involved. You know, yes. We are for you, praying for you. I know our audience is supporting it. And mm -hmm. hey, we're proud. We're proud that we've got Absolutely. something that's successful and that Hollywood is baffled by. They are Absolutely. baffled by those numbers. They're yes. like, what? They don't get yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, listen, folks, tune in next week because I'm sure we're going to have yet another update on that. And, uh, and we'll talk about another movie that we just need to maybe warn you about. Yeah, Holly, absolutely. A couple more. A couple more. Thank, <laughs> yes. Holly, thank you so much for being that sacrificial lamb that goes and watches these things. Thank right? you. Thanks, <laughs> Isaac. See you God next. bless everyone. Yes, bye. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, Go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.